Hello, and welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk with immigration attorney Brian D. Lerner. Uh, in this particular episode, I'd like to talk about the uh, case that was just ruled on by the district court in Hawaii regarding the uh, Muslim ban uh, that uh, Trump had tried in the second go around. Uh, now, uh, procedurally, uh, as many of you must know by this time, uh, he tried the first uh, executive order, uh, essentially uh, just up and down, violating all kinds of areas of the uh, Constitution, uh, which uh, the district court in Washington, um, you know, threw the gauntlet at it and, you know, made a nationwide uh, injunction against its enforcement. And then that was appealed to the uh, Ninth Circuit, which the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals essentially agreed and basically said that it just can't happen uh, with what Trump wanted to do. And, you know, the bottom line is it was uh, basically a Muslim ban. So he, he went back to the drawing board and he again tried to... Uh, do another ban, um, which again, he's obviously not calling a Muslim ban, but uh, it was a watered down version. And it had lots of facts in there about how there's 300 some uh, people from those countries in the US right now on trial. And the first thing when I read the entire uh, second uh, executive order, that I thought is, I was wondering all these facts and figures that he was putting in there, what veracity it had to it and how true it was. It's unfortunate, but um, with, for example, the wiretapping claims and, you know, all of the stuff that said, but that's not true. And the throwing the, the truth around as though it doesn't exist. Uh, it's hard to, you know, put... Uh, uh, credence in statements that are made in an executive order as to whether or not they're actually true. But minus that, the uh, uh, district court in Hawaii originally ruled that this was a temporary restraining order, which was supposed to be temporary, okay, very short in, in time. And uh, the district court did order uh, nationwide, uh, you know, temporary restraining order, meaning that nobody anywhere in the United States could abide by or enforce uh, the second executive order. Well, the plaintiffs in that particular uh, decision uh, had then made a motion to convert the temporary restraining order, which is very na uh, temporary, uh, very short, into a preliminary injunction which is much longer in nature, and still it's not final, but it's much longer in nature um, so that they didn't have to keep going back to court or so that, for example, the temporary restraining order, uh, you know, which is issued for uh, a brief time, would expire and then the, the ban would uh, come into effect. So that decision uh, was just issued uh, by the district court in Hawaii which essentially agreed with the plaintiffs and converted the temporary restraining order into a preliminary injunction. And the basic reasoning was that no matter how uh, Trump had put and worded so carefully in the second executive order to try to uh, make it legitimate and to try to address the problems that occurred in the first one, which, by the way, he repealed, uh, he withdrew um, in order for the second one to come into effect. Um, the basic uh, solution um, was that he was, uh, the, the, the district court in Hawaii essentially said that the judge has seen all of the rhetoric that Trump did during the campaign trail, all of the 
uh, adversity towards the Muslims. All of the statements regarding Muslims, um, you know, all of the hate talk, basically, and had said that he, the judge, is not going to crawl into a corner, close the shades, turn the lights out, and pretend it never existed. It it does have, and it did have, some effect on this executive order, so that regardless of what the executive order itself said, the the theory behind it went into all of the rhetoric that Trump had said leading up to his win. So it became clear that, in fact, it was a Muslim ban. That's what he was trying to do. And the district court uh, issued the preliminary injunction based upon that. Now, the bottom line, there were several reasons, you know, minus what I just said, but the constitutional infringement that the district court stated was the reason for the order is that this executive order is a watered down version of the first executive order and basically it violates the establishment clause of the constitution. Now, why is there an establishment clause and what does it mean? Well, the establishment clause essentially says that the government will neither promote nor inhibit religious practices in the United States. And this is extremely important. That's the reason the establishment clause is in the First Amendment. Because, for example, you have a lot of these countries where there's no separation of church and state and the head, uh, you know, religious person, uh, essentially without any legal reasoning whatsoever, um, would would issue some decree. And anything that the government does uh, would have to abide by that decree. Um, and it, it makes a very dangerous system when there is not a separation of church and state. So the Establishment Clause makes a line that the government has to walk in order to abide by it. So on one hand, they cannot affirmatively help or promote a religion, which there was one part in the first executive order that clearly uh, w fell into this section where uh, Trump had said that if the people are coming in because of Christian persecution, that they will be given priority. So that, you know, clearly, um, uh, you know, violates the Establishment Clause. But then on the other end, you can't prohibit people who want to practice other religions as well. So the Muslim ban um, essentially prohibits people who believe in the religion that Muslims believe in from practicing in the United States, hence a violation of the Establishment Clause. And the, the forefathers, the founding fathers to the U.S. Constitution uh, saw that this Establishment Clause was necessary to prevent the exact occurrences of what is happening today. So it you know, in my view, it is great that, um, you know, we can see that the Constitution in this particular case has prevailed. It doesn't allow a watered down version of an executive order, which essentially is a Muslim ban, thereby preventing people from practicing their uh, particular religion in the United States. Um, and it, it shows the separation of church and state, and it also shows the balance of power. And I think Trump is greatly and significantly learning that these days, um, that you can't just take a pen and put an executive order and try to change everything to the way you want it in order to have your agenda when it violates the U.S. Constitution um, which is the cornerstone of America. So, uh, of course, that decision from the U.S. District Court was appealed to the Ninth Circuit. We'll see how that goes. Uh, and I'm sure regardless of how it goes, it'll be eventually uh, up 
through a writ of certiorari to the U.S. Supreme Court, um, upon which a decision, a final decision, would be made at that time. But as it stands now, uh, there's a nationwide uh, prohibition against, uh, you know, following that ex second executive order. And we'll see what happens. Okay, more on the coming videos.